Hello everyone, I'm Bison, and welcome to my second Tier 10 ranking video. Today I will be ranking my favorite class, uh, Tier 10 Destroyers. And if you want to see my first Tier 10 ranking video where I do a tier ranking for the Tier 10 Cruisers, check out the link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. One thing I would like to add uh, is my rankings are based primarily on randoms. However, a ship's competitive viability can be a significant factor in its placement in my tiers. So what I mean by that is since the mo vast majority of the people play randoms and aren't concerned about competitive, whether it be clan battles, king of the sea, I don't really consider ranked competitive, but some might. Uh, in that case, a ship may be a tier higher or a tier lower based on its viability in those various modes. Now, that does not mean that a ship that is only good in competitive is going to be ranked highly if it's really bad in randoms, although those ships are rare. Uh, at the same time, a ship that is only good in randoms but has no viability in competitive might be a tier lower based on its non-usage in competitive. Alright, so the first ship that we are going to rank will be the French destroyer Clabert. Not a big surprise here. Uh, this ship is extremely strong in all modes, competitive and randoms, Kleber, S tier. Why is Kleber S tier? Well, 7.8 concealment. Obviously, it's one of the strongest uh, attributes for a destroyer. Uh, 7.8 is not very good. This is a full conceal build, by the way. Um, but what does it make up for with its lack of concealment? It is extremely, extremely fast. Base speed of 46 knots. Uh, does this have a speed flag on it? Yes, it does. So it's a little bit slower without the speed flag. But you get the French speed boost, which gives you 20%. Uh, it lasts for 234 seconds if you have the speed boost mod, which makes you go extremely, extremely fast. Well over 50 knots, 55 knots, I believe. Uh, and it makes you extremely hard to hit. Also, uh, French de uh, destroyers have a special saturation mechanic, so while they don't get a heal, uh, the parts of the ship saturate faster than other destroyers, which means you take less damage uh, after parts of your ship have, has been saturated, uh, which gives them more survivability than basically any destroyer that doesn't have a heal. You combine that with the speed, and... They are quite difficult to kill, especially if you know how to uh, speed acceleration juke effectively. The torpedoes, they're only 8 kilometers, however they go 75 knots, and they deal a lot of damage. 18,400, uh, you know, they have a very fast reload time, so these are very good for YOLO torping, and, you know, 7.8 conceal... You have a very small window to stealth torp, but if people are pushing into you, you could definitely, you could definitely drop some torps and hit them. Um, they also have very good angles. Uh, Twenty-five thousand HP. Uh, oh, how could I forget? Uh, it has a base range of thirteen six, which is okay. Uh, the reload of 6.2, this is without BFT, it, it is with reload mod of 6.2 seconds, not very good, however, again, another special uh, ability of the French is the main battery reload consumable, which cuts your reload time in half for 15 seconds, so while this is active, uh, you have some of the best destroyer DPM in the game, um, because you have 8 guns. So, and you have very good arcs with your 139 millimeter, uh, with your 130 millimeter guns. You're going to give basically every DD in the game extremely 
extremely difficult time fighting you when you have that speed boost and that main battery reload active. Beyond that, uh, the AP is surprisingly very, very strong. You can Citadel a lot of Tier 10 cruisers, especially Des Moines, um, if you get their broadside at a decent range. Uh, you can absolutely murder uh, cruisers, and then especially something like a Minotaur, a Smolensk. I mean, they will... If you have the reload boost active with AP, you'll be able to melt them extremely, extremely quickly. And Club Airs, for a long time, have been using competitive. The speed is obviously a huge advantage. Uh, they just do a lot of things that are really good uh, in clan battles and King of the Sea. And in ranked, so it's been a, they've been a mainstays of competitive for a while. Um, just an incredibly, incredibly strong ship, and very obvious why it would be in the S tier. Moving on to the next French destroyer. Uh, this is a it's technically not a premium ship. We're giving calls them special tier 10s um, because it's available for coal uh, it doesn't give the normal economic bonuses of a, like a tier 8 or tier 9 premium ship but it comes with a camo it's available for coal is the marceau uh some people might disagree with this ranking some people might not uh I believe the Marceau is very strong, although I do not believe it is quite as good as the Clever, so I believe Marceau is in the A tier. It's, honestly, you can make an argument that it's sort of a, a tweener in between S and A, um, but because I do think overall the Clever is stronger than the Marceau, I put Marceau in A. Now, why is Marceau in A and Clever is in S? Well, we'll pull up Marce Marceau. A captain on it. I believe this is the captain I use. Marceau has some of, if not the highest, uh, HE DPM in the game for a destroyer. Um, it's basically the same hull as a clever, as you can see. Um, the main difference being the guns. Now, this is also four point uh, four by two, so you get eight guns. The caliber is lower. Uh, these and the base reload is a lot better. It's about double. 3.1 seconds versus 6.2. So you might be asking, well, why? How, how can Marceau be worse if it has double the the DPM of a Colbert if the Colbert doesn't have reload boost? Well, the gun arcs on the Marceau are far, far worse than Colbert. Colbert has very, very uh, flat shell arcs, while the Marceau it has basically the same... I think actually it quite literally is the same guns as the Colbert, the Tier 10 French cruiser, which, if you've played that ship, know the shells are extremely, extremely floaty. So, while the Colbert has no issues uh, hitting ships up to its max range of 13.8 um or some people even run aft club air to get the range over 16 uh which you have little difficulty hitting at least battleships at that range marceau does not have that the, the shells are extremely floaty uh i take aft uh which gives you 13.8 range um even hitting a moving battleship at 13.8 in a Marceau can be quite difficult because of how floaty the shells are. Although, without AFT, you are in the, I believe, 11.6 kilometer range. Uh, which means secondary battleships in particular can create serious problems for you. Especially with the release of the Schlieffen. Uh, you literally cannot fight a Schlieffen within his secondary range in a destroyer. He will melt you so fast with the secondaries. He doesn't even have to shoot at you with his main guns. He just needs to have his secondaries active on you and your health is going to evaporate. Um, 
Beyond that, the characteristics uh, shared with the Clover are pretty close. Um, it has better conceal, 7.0 versus 7.8, so that's nice. Um, it allows you to be a bit more of a DD hunter. So I know, especially in ranked, you'll see a lot of people running RPF. Marceau, I don't think it's necessary. In general, I think RPF is a waste of a skill uh, in randoms. And ranked in, in clan battles and uh, king of the sea, for sure you want at least a DD or two with RPF. But I, I don't, I don't like the viability in randoms. Um, it does have much better AA than clever. Clever has basically no AA. Marceau has, for a destroyer, some of the better AA because it does have access to the defensive fire consumable. Also, it has the same speed boost as. Clever, so it's going to be going well over 55 knots uh, for 234 seconds with speed boost and the speed boost mod. Um, but instead of MBRB, as I said, it gets defensive AA. Against a good carrier player, it's not going to really do a whole lot. Um, but because you're so fast and you throw in the defensive AA, even though you don't have a smoke screen, it can be difficult for a CV to really hard focus you down uh, because of those tools. Uh, the torpedoes also are a little different on the Marceau. Unlike the uh, Clover, you have uh, torpedoes that go 9 kilometers instead of 8. Uh, they do less damage. They are a lot slower, 60 knots versus 75 knots, although the detectability is better, um, and they reload a lot slower. So, uh, I would say the Kleber Torps are better um, overall, just because of the damage, the YOLO potential. Um, I mean, YOLOing a Kremlin, a full HP Kremlin, for example, in a Marceau, you're going to have to get both sides off in order to kill him. Uh, whereas with the Kleber, you might only need one side uh, to kill the Kremlin, depending on his HP. Um, everything else about the two ships is essentially the same. Uh, HP, the saturation mechanic. Um, Marceau, as, in addition to Kleber, very viable in all modes, randoms competitive, ranked, uh, just a great ship. Uh, I would just put it one tier below uh, Clubert because Clubert, I think, just does more. And in a 1v1, if the Clubert has speed boost, he should dominate the Marceau. Because, just because of his arcs, basically. It's a lot easier for the Clubert to hit the Marceau uh, than it is for the Marceau to hit the Clubert. Okay. Next up, we have the Japanese DDs. And the first one, uh, which is one of the first DDs in the game, along with the gearing, the Shimakaze. Where are we putting the Shimakaze? We're going to put it in the B tier. Now, the Shimakaze gets a bit of a bad rap. Uh, and understandably so, because... Where is the Shimakaze? Right there. Because the Shimakaze, basically since its introduction into the game, which was the beginning of the game, has sort of been the ship that attracts a tremendous amount of potatoes. Why is that? Well, it is the stereotypical torpedo boat. You have extremely good stealth, 5.6 kilometers, um, which is the best at tier 10. Uh, you are quite fast, 41 knots without speed boost. I believe this is with the speed flag, though. Um, but your torpedoes. Okay, so you have three different types of torpedoes you can take. You can take 20 kilometer torpedoes, the longest range torpedoes in the game. Uh, they do almost 21,000 damage. Uh, they go 68 knots. 
Um, decent reload time. Again, this is uh, basically a full torpedo build Shimakaze. So they reload in a little bit under two minutes, which isn't great. But the problem with these is 2.5 kilometer detectability. So if you see if you see a Shimakaze player running 20, 20 kilometer torpedoes, uh, it's generally an indication that he doesn't know what he's doing. Because 2.5 kilometers is almost the range at which ships pick up torpedoes with hydroacoustic surge active. So the chance of you hitting more than a few of these torpedoes a game is very, very low. Now, the other options, the F3s, uh, these are kind of meme, they're kind of a meme pick because they are only 8 kilometers. Uh, you can get them to go extremely fast, 84 knots. Uh, they do 21,300 in damage, uh, have decent detectability, especially for how fast they go, and they reload faster, 100 seconds. But they only go 8 knots. Um, the Kleber is not a affected as much by its short-range torpedoes because it's not a torpedo boat. It's a gunboat that has good torpedoes good short-range torpedoes, particularly for YOLOing. Shimakaze is not a good gumbo. It's primarily a torpedo boat. Completely torpedo boat. With so much radar in the game, especially 12-kilometer radar, aircraft carriers, getting in range to, do, to, to hit torpedoes at 8 kilometers is extremely, extremely difficult. Now, that being said, sometimes for the memes, I will run an F3 Shima build, and I generally do pretty well, be mostly because you have to get so close in order to use them, and they go so fast that they're basically guaranteed to hit. But most people, and the most logical choice to run, are the 12s. Uh, the, the speed gets up to 74 knots, which, again, is quite fast. The detectability is... Not that bad at 1.7. The damage they do, though, almost 24,000 in in alpha. And a little bit less than two minutes in reload. Again, not great, but uh, you get 15 of them. Uh, three racks of five. Uh, these torpedoes, when they hit, are devastating. Basically, if you, if you hit any ship, in, uh, any destroyer, except for a few midship, they're dead. Uh, if you hit uh, a cruiser, which has basically no, no torpedo belt, with one or two of these, they're either dead or completely taken out of the game. You send them on battleships, it's, you know, a tremendous amount of damage that is unhealable. Uh, make no mistake, Shimakaze torpedoes, if you can land them, are very, very strong. Uh, and the guns themselves on the Shimakaze, well, not amazing. The reload, not good at 5.5 seconds. Uh, the turret traverse on the guns is also quite bad. However, you can do pretty well with Shimakaze guns, and I'll tell you how. The Well, first off, the alpha on, uh, these, on these guns, the HE Alpha 21.5, is, I believe, the best in the game for destroyer caliber guns so they hit hard they the reload is not very good but they hit hard another thing is and this is the space camo so it's a little bit harder to see but the the way the guns are set up on the shimikaze is you have two guns in the back and only one gun in the front so generally you're going to be out spotting every other destroyer you'll be turned out you're quite small and you can just use these two back guns and wiggle and the arcs on the guns are quite good as well. So you can kind of just wiggle, shoot at them with your back two guns, take very little damage in return, and, and smack them with a few salvos of high HE alpha guns. Uh, in terms of its viability and competitive, uh, you do see them 
fairly often, at least in previous seasons, I have not seen very many Shimmas this season uh, for various reasons that would take too long to get into. But basically, due to its best-in-class concealment at 5.6 and the Torpedoes, it's always kind of been a, a solid pick uh, for competitive game modes. Ranked, not so much. Um, but randoms you can do quite well in the Shimakaze. Uh, again, it, it's B tier because it's good, but it has some pretty significant weaknesses. And, well, it's honestly probably gets bogged down by a lot of the, let's say, less skilled players that enjoy launching torpedoes from 20 kilometers uh, and end up being completely ineffective in most games. All right, next up is the Japanese destroyer, almost kind of a light cruiser, Harugumo. Harugumo's an S tier. Why is Harugumo an S tier? Because Harugumo has been nerfed uh, primarily due to the IFHE rework a while ago, because before the Harugumo... Well, it could always pan 30 millimeter base, even though it has only 100 millimeter guns. Uh, if you took IFHE, you took a slight decrease in fire chance to be able to pen 32 millimeters, which was you know bow and stern of every battleship and basically the entire ship on uh, French and British battleships. With IFHE now reducing fire chance by half, uh, you, it kind of makes you make a decision of do you want to run IFHE and get more penetrations or do you want to get more fires? I think both are viable. I don't know if one is particularly better than the other. Uh, but... Let's get into why Harugumo is S tier. Has a lot of HP, almost 30,000 HP, which is huge for a destroyer. Um, it has 10 guns that reload in 2.5 seconds um, if you have BFT and reload mod. Uh, you have, let's see. 12.6 range, which is fine. You can, you can take AFT and get it to, I think, a little bit over 15, although the shells are extremely floaty. Uh, Torpedo-wise, you get only one rack with six torpedoes. These are basically the, the same as the 12-kilometer torpedoes in the Shimakaze. I think they're actually exactly the same. Uh, but you get... Torpedo Reload Boost. So you get three of these consumables uh, without Superintendent. And you can launch them. Uh, so you could launch basically 12 sets of these Shimakaze, or 12 torpedoes, uh, if you use this in conjunction with your regular torpedoes. Which is pretty good for a, almost a completely gun-focused boat. Being able to launch these torpedoes can get you a lot of damage. Uh, concealment, surprisingly, is not that bad. A lot of people in randoms will run a non-conceal build, which will get you around 6.8. But 6.2, uh, given the delay, the spotting delay, unless you're running into like a Shimakaze or a, a, another ship with really, really good detection, you're going to have concealment that's pretty close to something like a daring. And there's very few, if any, destroyers that want to take a 1v1 gunfight with the Harugumo. You're basically going to, if not murder, at least trade positively with every destroyer in the game. But just by the amount of guns you have and the DPM. Um, you can also make life miserable for cruisers because even without IFHE, you pen 30 millimeter. So you smoke up, you know, 11, 12 kilometers from a DM and you just melt them. Uh, you melt battleships, you set a ton of fires. Uh, 
in ranked, I don't think Haragumo is a great pick, although in clan battles and King of the Sea, I have seen them used to very, very good efficiency. You could use it as basically a smoke a smoke destroyer to, to smoke up your cruisers, but one that also has incredible DPM that can be utilized. So overall, it just has a lot of tools that can be used uh, in conjunction with its insane gun DPM that makes it S tier. It's just a really, really strong destroyer, almost a light cruiser, but it can even, if you go full conceal, it can even do a destroyer's job well. Biggest downside of the Harugumo is it's big. It's really, really big. It's not particularly fast, although it's not super slow and it does get speed boost, but the turning circle radius is big. So, you know, don't make the mistake of sitting broadside in your smoke and eating torpedoes. Uh, that's basically the biggest threat to a Harugumo. Next up, uh, this is probably be the first controversial pick or controversial ranking on the list. People are going to say, how is this ship not in garbage? Don't worry, I'll explain. Hayate. I'm going to put Hayate in B tier. Now, has to be said, I'm a little bit biased because I am a big fan of Hayate. Uh, as of this video, I think I'm ranked number one on the leaderboard on NA and Hayate. Now, uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. It's a pretty rare ship, and not a lot of people really care about, like, leaderboarding it. So, you know, if some if somebody wanted to do it, they probably could beat me on it. But it is what it is. I quite like this boat. Well, why do I like this boat? And why do I not think it's garbage tier? Why do I think it's B tier? Like, a, kind of a middle-of-the-road destroyer. Well, the detectability, 6.1 with full conceal, not that great. I'll admit it. Um, but, but, it has a lot of other kind of weird tools going for it. So, with almost a full gun build, I think I actually have... Well, I think this is basically full gun build. You could even drop, and this is how this is how I played it uh, when I was doing my my games, my leaderboard games with it. I dropped conceal and took AFT, and I basically played it like a budget Japanese Grozovoy. Uh, you know, you get it about thirteen nine kilometer range. The arcs aren't bad. You have a uh, pretty good reload and very good fire chance and obviously very good alpha on the japanese guns um decent health pool uh the guns like the shimikaze you have two guns in the back and so this is why it's a very good kiter uh you don't need to show a lot of your ship profile in order to get at least two-thirds of your dpm on a target so you're very good at kiting uh you also get Shimikaze torpedoes. The reload, as you can see, is very, very long. 153 seconds. That is actually incredibly long. Uh, but there's still Shimikaze torpedoes. You get 10 of them. If you want to, you can run Torpedo Reload instead of Smoke. I don't advise that. Um, if you're trying to maximize your damage output, because... You know, your smokes in conjunction with your torpedoes, you can have some really, really good high damage games and have a pretty good uh, impact on the match. Uh, I know a lot of people think their ship is really bad. Frank, frankly, I disagree. I think it's a decent ship. And that's pretty much it. Uh... It turns a lot better than Haragumo, for example. It's quicker. Um, obviously, it doesn't have the insane DPM of the Haragumo. It's not a full torpedo boat like the Shima. It's sort of a in-between type ship. Um, but I don't think it's a bad DD. I think it's a decent, decent DD. And I think 
people should give it a bit more of a chance instead of dismissing it as worthless because I don't think it's worthless. I think it's quite good. Okay, next up, a ship that has probably been nerfed harder than any ship in the game, or at least it's certainly up there as being nerfed harder than, than almost any ship in the game, the Yu Yang. Now, we're talking quite a few years ago when the Yu Yang was nerfed, because essentially when the Yu Yang came out, it was more or less a better gearing, because it is the same as the gearing hull, uh, same gearing guns, same gearing concealment, almost everything the same as the gearing, although it had a much more modern, uh, what's the word, modern uh, model. So, whereas the gearing, and we can talk about that later, the gearing is extremely fat, and the model is really old because it was one of the first ships included in the game. Uh, and this was, was was when battleships uh, could give full AP damage uh, on destroyers in certain circumstances. Uh, the gearing would eat a lot more damage than the Yu Yang. And the Yu Yang also had uh, uh, arguably better torpedoes because they're deep waters, which means... They don't hit destroyers, but with 0.8 warp detectability, they're extremely difficult for cruisers and battleships to dodge. So you couldn't torp DDs, but your torps were much more reliable on other targets. It's smokes. These were sort of like the precursor to British smokes in that they... Where do we look at the smokes? Uh -huh. This is kind of a meme radar build on it which people used to use that in competitive and before ships like Ragnar and Smellond came out uh, that's why this ship was really meta in the early days of clan battles but the smokes uh, they're short but they reload very fast and you get more of them than in the gearing so they're more flexible um What else is there to say on the on the Yu Yang? Uh, I guess it was so popular and competitive because of the radar, uh, because it was the only radar DD at Tier 10. It got heavily, heavily, heavily nerfed. The gun DPM was cut down by a ton. The torp reload was cut down by a ton. Over the years, it's been marginally increased, both of them, but it's still kind of... Hold on. Did I rank it? Yeah, I did rank it as, as a C tier. I'm going to brain delay there for a second. So, so I guess I should get to why is it C tier. Well, for randoms, the ship is not very good. There's just so many other better DDs out there that you can take. The radar is not viable in randoms because of ships like Smaland and Ragnar. Um... You could do okay with a smoke build, but the DPM's not very good. The torps are good, but again, you can't torp destroyers. Uh, it has seen some use in competitive as a smoker uh, to smoke up your cruisers, although I believe that the American smokes are better. You can lay much longer... Uh, in longer in terms of distance and longer in terms of duration smokes. Um, maybe the smokes are slightly less flexible, but you don't need to worry about constantly re-smoking your teammates uh, with U.S. Destroyer smoke, whereas you do with the Yu Yang. So I just don't think it has a lot of use in randoms at all. It has some niche use in competitive. And I just don't think that's enough for it to be anything better than a C-tier destroyer. Moving on. A ship that is also very close to my heart. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this ship. The Grozovoy. I think it's A-tier. Now, Grozovoy, a few years ago, was considered by many to be very, very bad. One of the worst destroyers 
at tier 10. Although it's been buffed uh, a tremendous amount. Um, let's put a captain on that I would actually... Or why not? Waste of time, but whatever. This is the build that I like to run with the Gross Void. Uh, I drop Concealment, which puts it at 6-7. Uh, you get AFT, so your range goes to 14-8, which is really, really good for a Destroyer. You get Superintendent, so you get extra consumables, so you get extra speed boost, smoke, heal, and defensive AA. I mean, this thing is like the consumable master. Um, it also has arguably the best uh, unique upgrade in the game. Uh, this is basically just a better reload mod, 18% versus 12%. Sure, you lose some torp uh, reload, but this is a gun-focused boat. This is this is an open-water gunboat. This is basically just a better version of the Khabarovsk uh, in every way. Um, so, what is good about the Grozovoy? Why do I like the Grozovoy? Well, the DPM, 3.4 seconds, might not stick out as that much, but you have Russian gun arcs, which are basically laser beams, and this is why I think Conceal is not that great on the Grozovoy, is in a knife fight, you're not going to do that well against most destroyers, but if you can create a little bit of distance, you're going to be able to hit them very reliably, whereas they won't be able to hit you reliably. Uh, if you're fighting like a Kleber or a Marceau, sure, they have better DPM than you, and they're faster than you, but they don't have smoke. So you can kind of... And they don't have a heal either. So you get them to shoot, bait them into shooting, smoke up. Now they can't hit you. They're probably spotted by your team. And you can smack some damage into them as they run away. Uh, and you can also heal back any damage that you took from them, whereas they can't heal anything that they did to you, or that they received from you. It's base speed, 41.5 knots, pretty good. Um, it's got speed boost, N not a special speed boost, but I think it'll get you almost to 50 knots. Um, which, considering you have 14.8 range, uh, is very, very good. You can open water gunboat in this thing amazingly. Uh, with the fire chance on it, 8%. I don't think I have any flags on. I think if you throw the flags on, you can get the fire chance up to 9%, which again, pretty decent. Torpedoes, nothing really to write home about. Again, with the unique uh, upgrade... The reload is very slow, but they're 10 kilometers. They do 16,000 in damage. Decent speed, good detectability. You know, you're not be you're not playing a torp boat in this game or in this ship, but the torpedoes are quite usable and a good way to supplement your damage. The AA, oh, makes me sad because Grosvoy AA used to be insane. Back in the RTS days, now, for whatever reason, even with Def AA, the AA is really nothing to write home about. But you have it. You can make bad carriers suffer a little bit. A good carrier is not really going to be bothered by your defensive AA. But it's another tool. Uh, in terms of competitive, you don't really see the Grozovoy used that much. Um... Although I think you can. I think certainly our clan has used uh, Grosovoy before when we were running heavy French DD com comps. Um, because it's pretty fast, you can sort of use it in conjunction with the French DDs to get up close with them and either smoke them in spot or provide extra fire support from smoke. It's, it, it's pretty versatile for comp, but it, it's not super meta. And competitive. Um, I don't think it's a great ranked ship either, but it's great for randoms. You can use it in competitive in certain lineups. And 
I think all around it's just a really, really strong destroyer for a lot of circumstances. So uh, I think it's comfortably an A tier destroyer. Now, the flip side of the Russian destroyers is the Kaparovsk. It's a garbage tier destroyer. Why is the Cobb garbage tier? Let's see, do we even have a captain for it? Um, here, we'll, we'll build it really quick to see what I would build on it. Um, it's last stand, survivability, superintendent. Don't really need conceal, AFT, fearless, and then IFA. This is probably what I would take on the Kabarovsk. Um, most people don't have the unique upgrade, so I'll take this off. I'll just put the uh, probably rudder shift. Because the rudder is so bad. Now, this ship, when it came out years ago, was extremely overpowered uh, to the point where it got nerfed tons of times. And after all the various nerfs, it's now, I would say, the well, I don't think it's really question, uh, questionable, the worst destroyer at tier 10. Uh, your guns pretty good you get eight of them with a 4.4 second reload they also have the russian arc so they're pretty easy to hit targets with uh at range although the main issue with the kabarovsk 13.5 kilometer range now make no mistake you are a huge destroyer huge and you have horrible horrible concealment because most people don't take concealment on it because it's not worth it. So you have almost 10 kilometer conceal, which is worse than some cruisers. Um, yeah, you're quite fast. Base 45 with speed boost, you get over over 50 knots. Um, but you have, in addition to your horrible concealment, you have horrible turning circle. I took the rudder shift because without the rudder shift mod... You have horrible, horrible rudder shift. You can barely move. Um, 13.5. I know I said that it was fine with uh, like Marceau and Clabert. It's not very fine with Kaba. Um, you're just so big uh, that... It, and other than being fast, you're not very maneuverable, that you just take a lot of damage. Um, the one, I guess, saving grace, or one of the saving graces for the Kaba, is you have this 50 millimeter plate here and here, which means that destroyers will struggle to pen you with HE, basically no destroyer, and even a lot of cruisers will not pen your side with HE. Although... If they switch to AP, especially something like a Daring or something like that, will just devastate you with AP damage. Um, Kaba has no use in competitive. It's very bad for ranked. Um, if you want an open water HE spamming destroyer, just pick the Grozovoy or the French DDs or... Basically, almost anything else. Uh, it's just not. It's just not good. It's not competitive. Uh, I will say that it's going to become a coal ship in the near future, and it will be replaced by a ship called the Delny. It's currently an NDA, so I can't talk about the Delny. Uh, but that's really what we have for the Kaba. There's not much else to say other than it's not in a good state right now. And I don't know if it's going to be buffed once it becomes a coal ship, but I would not recommend. The only reason I would recommend grinding the Kaba right now would be so you can get the Delny when it comes out. Um, and you, you get basically a free uh, premium tier 10 because the Kaba will become available for coal. Moving on. Uh, a ship that is no longer available. It was available for steel. The Summers. 
Summers is going in S tier. Why is the Summers an S tier? Well, Summers is basically the American Shimakaze, but kind of better in almost every single way. Uh, it has, like the Kaba, three racks of torpedoes, although these are 3x4, not 3x5. So you get 12 torpedoes in the water. But these might be the best torpedoes in the game, and I'll tell you why. Again, you get 12 of them. They have incredibly long range of 16.5. Uh, but unlike the Shimakaze torpedoes, which are spotted from the moon, these have 1.4 kilometer detection, which is very stealthy. Very stealthy. And this actually, this is like a full smoke build. Uh, let's see if I can put a torpedo build on it, because that's probably more viable. Uh, these torpedoes at 69. And then put this on. The torpedoes can get to 73 knots with 1.4 detection, almost 18,000 alpha. Also only a 99 second reload. Uh, these are probably the best torpedoes in the game. Uh, the guns on it, not spectacular by any means. Um, you get eight of them, but the reload is quite slow, only 5.7 seconds. Um, the alpha with, you know, eight guns is not bad, but you're not a gunboat by any means. You have great stealth at 5.8, basically only a Shimakaze at tier 10 or a gearing with legendary mod is going to outspot you. Um, Summers is good for randoms. It's incredible for competitive. It's actually banned in King of the Sea because it's no longer available. Um, but in clan battles, it's very good. Uh, it is extremely small and maneuverable. So if you compare... If you compare it to the gearing model, I said how big the gearing was before. Look how big and fat the gearing is. I mean, it's giant for a destroyer. And the freeboard is huge. Compared to the summers, it's tiny. It's way more difficult to hit for other ships. So if you do get spotted, you know, if, or if you get raided or something, you're going to take far less damage than you would than if you were in a gearing. Um, pretty quick, 40.5 knots uh, with speed flag. You also get speed boost, so you can go faster than that. Um, does have, like, basically tier 4 or something AA, some of the worst AA in the game, but, I mean, does Destroyer AA really mean anything at tier 10 outside of a few ships? Not really, no. So... It's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. Uh, just probably the best torpedo boat in the game. At least at tier 10. So that alone, and its viability in comp, uh, easy S tier for me. The other US destroyer, Gearing. Honestly, I think Gearing could fall between A or B, but I'm going to put it at A just because of the fact that I mentioned before of gearing, or sorry, of <clears throat> Summers being banned in King of the Sea, gearing is not. Um, so you have the great USN smokes, you have the great USN torpedoes, um, although you only get 10 in double launchers as opposed to 12 in triple launchers like the Summers. So the torps, slightly worse than the Summers. You do get much better... Uh, gun reload. Um, you can actually get this even lower. Uh, six guns. Um, why do I have 15 5 rank? I don't... This is probably some really spastic captain. I don't know why I put it on. Uh, yeah, I don't even have conceal on it. Uh, whatever. But the gearing gets 5-9 conceal, and... If you take the legendary upgrade, it gets you to the same concealment as a Shima, which is, I think, really bad for randoms because you lose gun and torp DPM. 
but it is very good in competitive because you have USN smokes and gearing torpedoes and you're on the same conceal as a shimikaze so quite useful in competitive and in randoms the gearing can still do work one nice thing about the gearing is it has 21 millimeter side plating so there's a certain amount of destroyers that will shatter against you not all low caliber gun destroyers but a few of them now this is also kind of a double-edged sword because along with being so fat uh this will allow you to eat like destroyer ap from a daring or a druid or other types of ships like that so you know basically gearing is like a worse summers in my opinion yeah it gets a few better things but overall the summer's just a better ship overall a better torpedo boat and that's sort of kind of what the gearing has been relegated to maybe in the early days of the game it was a much better gunboat but there's way better gunboats out out here now uh but good torpedoes great smokes viability and competitive it's an a tier next up one of if not my favorite ships in the game and an incredible destroyer in my opinion daring where is she daring is oh wow i have, guess i've never played it on this uh account this is what my build would be And then we'll put the modules on it. We'll put just the important ones on. Put reload on. We'll put concealment. And everything else. everything else is fine. We'll put a camo on for good measure so we can see the full stats. So, the daring. What is special about the daring? Well, the daring has amazing DPM. It actually, the DPM got nerfed. Uh, it used to be even better. 2.3 second uh, reload with BFT. Um, honestly, really good range. Even though the shells are really floaty, 12.8 range is, is quite good without any range upgrades. Uh, it is good concealment at 6.0. Not the best, but decent. Uh, it's quite slow. Let's put a speed flag on to see what it gets out with speed flag. 36.8 so again quite slow it does not get access to speed boost um however it gets special british acceleration which means you basically don't lose any speed in turns and you accelerate really quickly so you can't actually even take uh prop mod you just take uh steering gears um torpedoes Decent, kind of like Rosevoy torpedoes, 10 kilometers, decent damage, decent speed, decent detectability, uh, but unlike the Rosevoy, for example, you can single launch them, which allows you to do something that is very, very cheeky. Uh, some people call it a snail, some people call it a conga line. Basically, you go up to a ship that's on an island, so often it could be like a Des Moines or a Stalingrad. You bait out their radar, and then you come back, and you launch all 10 torpedoes in a direct single-file line at them, which essentially makes it undodgeable. And I can't count the amount of times I've done that to like a radar cruiser on an island, and in randoms and competitive, and it's just hilarious. Uh, it's one of the most satisfying feelings in the game. So the Torps, while not amazing, that single file option uh, opens up tons of possibilities. The HP pool, pretty good at 24,300, but you get three heals. They don't heal that much, but they're heals nonetheless. You also get Hydroacoustic Search that lasts for three minutes base. 
And you can get it even longer with the Hydro mod. Let's see what it is with the Hydro mod. It's like three and a half minutes. Uh, which is crazy. It's only three kilometers. So it's not like a Z52 Hydro. But you will basically never get torpedoed in this thing. It's because it's so maneuverable. And you get seven smoke screens. Now these are sort of like the Pan-Asian ones I was talking about where they're very short, but it actually meshes really well with the daring play style of you go up to like a battleship or something, you smoke up, start spamming him, get uh, get a DCP, uh, or just set a permafire on him, and then boom, relocate. Your smoke's going to be up very shortly because it's a very short uh, reload time. Uh, daring is amazing for randoms, for winning games in randoms, for damage farming in randoms. It's good in ranked. Uh, it's pretty good in competitive. You don't... Well, I should say you'd see it fairly often in competitive. Maybe not this season of clan battles, but I did see quite a few in King of the Sea. Um, it's just really, really versatile. It has tons of tools to work with. It's really fun to play. Um... It's no doubt in my mind a solid S tier destroyer. Next up, the other British uh, destroyer that was recently introduced. Uh, it's a research bureau ship, so it's kind of hard to get. Um, the Druid. The Druid. It's a C tier for me. Um. It is, in theory, it's really cool, and it can be really fun, but in terms of viability, so it's AP only, and it only has two guns in the front, so it only has four guns total. They have a really good reload, 1.6 seconds with, like, you know, full reload build. Um, I took AFT on it because I, again... With the Schle so many Schlieffens out here and their secondaries, you know, having to not being able to open water because of like 12 6 range is really not good on a ship that does not have torpedoes. By the way, it doesn't have torpedoes. Has the same like maneuverability and whatnot as the Daring, um, but it has much worse conceal. I think the best you can get the conceal to is 6 6, so I just dropped conceal on it. Um, has more HP. Then a uh, daring, you do get the basically the same consumables, although the heal is better. Uh, it heals more, um, but the hydro and the smokes are the same. Um, but like I said, it's AP only. It has basically low caliber Minotaur AP, which means improved uh, angles and a very short fuse time. So. If you fight destroyers, you can actually dominate them because you just go bow into them and give them a small profile for them to hit and they take massive damage from you with their AP, especially certain bigger destroyers. Um, but you really need broadsides to do big damage. It's not good for ranked. It's I've never seen it in clan battles or uh king of the sea so basically no use in competitive uh not having he not being able to set fires being completely reliant on ap um just makes it not really versatile at all you can't really hunt dds even though you're good against them because you're so slow and have uh horrible concealment i just don't think it's very viable and that's why it's in a seat in, in the c tier Now, another Research Bureau ship, uh, this is Commonwealth ship. Um, again, it's also base. I think it's in the same class as a Daring in terms of real life. Um, Vampire 2. Oh, no, sorry, it's an A tier. Whoopsie, not an S tier. Vampire 2, people will often ask me on stream, you know, should I get Vampire 2? You know, what Research Bureau ship should I get? Vampire 2, it's sort of a side grade to the Daring. Um, 
It has better DPM by a little bit. Um, it has only one rack of five torpedoes, but it's longer range and they do more damage. And I believe they reload faster. Everything else is more or less the same. Except, oh, it has a little bit better conceal as well. Except the main difference, instead of getting a heal and the, the quick uh, short duration smokes, you get speed boost, a longer range hydro, so five kilometer detection of ship hydro, and crawling smoke. No heal. So what does this mean? This means that if you ever played the Haida, you're basically a Haida at tier 10. Like, you pop your Crawling Smoke, and you walk at Destroyers, and if you catch them when, in your Hydro, you murder them with your good DPM. And you can also use that Crawling Smoke to, you know, kind of like walk at people and farm them. Uh, whereas in the Daring, you pop the smoke, fire for a little bit, and then relocate. The Crawling Smoke is much longer in duration. It's like uh, 134 seconds, so, you know, over two minutes of farming. Uh, but I would say overall it's less versatile um, than the Daring Smokes. Uh, we did see a little bit of Vampire in King of the Sea. Haven't really seen it in Clan Battles this season. So it does have viability and competitive it does have viability and ranked but the reason why i would put it below the daring is just the lack of heals heals on a gunboat destroyer are so so powerful it cannot be underestimated um you know even if you get a really good trade with another destroyer in the vampire you're never getting your health back Whereas in a Daring or any other Destroyer with a heal, you can. And that just gives them a tremendous amount, of, a tremendous advantage over you. So, Vampire has a lot of tools, viable in all game modes. But I would just put it below S tier because it's a gunboat without a heal. And without the French saturation mechanics. So, you know... It's just missing that that one extra tool or that, that one extra thing to, to be an S tier. But regardless, still a really good ship. And if you want to spend your research bureau on it, it's not a bad choice. Let's see, next up we got Elbing. Elbing. This could honestly go between B and C, but I'm gonna put it at B. Just because I might be a little bit biased because I like it and have uh, been putting up some pretty good stats with it. Um, here, I don't have a captain for it. This is what I would build on it. Um, actually, I think I already have, I already have it spec'd out, but uh, it's really annoying. Uh, so what do I take on it? I don't take concealment. I take AFT. I take fearless. Um, but I don't take BFT. I think that and that. I think that this is the build that I like. So the Elbing is sort of in like the Kaba zone of not being an actual destroyer. It's much more of a cruiser. Uh, Although it's not really fast. I mean, 38's not terribly slow, but it's gigantic. Um, it has 150 millimeter guns with not great reload. However, with AFT, you get 16 kilometer range. And the AP on this ship is insane. So with the AP skill, 4400 alpha, uh, the arcs are super flat. The uh, angles on the AP are improved. Uh, and you can basically citadel almost all cruisers out to your maximum gun range, which is insane. Like, 
You're citadeling Des Moines at 16 kilometers as a destroyer. That's disgusting. Um, you also have huge HP uh, hit point pool. 34,000. You don't get a heal, but... Uh, and then another thing, 25 millimeter plating. So you don't really want to fight other destroyers in this ship. Um, at least not close up because of your slow reload. Um, but they're going to struggle to pen you with HE. Uh, I mean, they just won't pen you here, except for like a Harugumo or a Ragnar. And you can kind of just kite them out and you have such good arcs. Um, and if you get some full pens on them because they angle, you're going to do huge damage to them. Uh, the torpedoes, on paper, they don't look amazing because they're so slow, only 50 knots. But you, they reload really fast. They do decent damage. They're very hard to detect. And they have good range. So you'd be surprised how many torpedo hits you get by just chucking these guys out. Uh, this is much more of a random ship. Not very viable and competitive. Uh, I think... For random, if it was randoms only, it honestly would be close to an A tier, but because it has literally no use in, in like ranked or uh, uh, clan battles for King of the Sea, I think B is a good spot for it. But a really, really fun ship, a really, really good ship uh, in a lot of circumstances, and something that, you know. I think a lot of people should try out because it's really fun. Just don't make the mistake of playing it like a destroyer, like a regular destroyer and captain testing, because you're going to suffer. It's probably the hardest ship to dodge torpedoes in, like hardest destroyer. Um, the next German destroyer is Z-52. Z-52 uh... It got buffed recently, so it gets 32mm pen on its HE. Um, even though the HE German Alpha is really bad. Um, its main claim to fame is its 6km Hydro, which when the ship was introduced uh, years ago was really strong uh, because there was much less radar in the game. Not a lot of CVs. Uh, it was really useful in clan battles to basically just lock down an island. With so much radar in the game now, even on destroyers, and as I mentioned, aircraft carriers, getting actually in a position to use that hydro, uh, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, the DPM's not amazing, especially because the HE is so low. The AP's pretty good. Um, although it's not really going to arm on destroyers a lot of the time. Uh, the torpedoes, they're okay. They're short range, or 10.5. They don't do a lot of damage. They're marginal, I would say. It's pretty slow and big. It's just kind of... Its whole gimmick, like, it, it, its whole gimmick is based around the, the hydro, and... There's just so few times that you can use it, especially in randoms, that I just don't think it's very good. Uh, we did see it played quite a bit in King of the Sea, but it's basically never used in clan battles, so it's a C tier for me. It's just, for a ship based around its hydro, that it can very rarely get into a good position to use. It's just not enough for me to put it above a C tier. Now we get to the last uh, nation, the Pan-European, well, nation in quotations, uh, Pan-European destroyers, Holland. It says, if, you, if any of you watch my streams, you know how much I hate this ship. Mostly the players that play it because of how they play it. Holland for me is a C tier. Uh, why is that? Well, it's got, it, it's got four guns with, you know, an okay reload. 
Um, it's not going to be one of the best gunboats in the game. Um, just because it only has four guns. Um, its torpedoes are actually pretty good. Uh, 15 kilometer range. They go insanely fast. I think you can get them even over 90 knots. But they only do 10,000 damage. So whereas, you know, if you hit one Halon Torp uh, on a ship that's like versus a Shimakaze Torpedo, hitting a Shimakaze Torpedo it does over twice the damage. So it's like 10,000 alpha versus almost 24,000 alpha. So sure, you're probably going to hit more torpedoes in the Halon, but they're going to do negligible damage. Uh, compared to something like a Shimakaze or even a even a Summer's Gearing Torpedo. Um, concealment's okay. It's big, it's slow, it's fat. Uh, it does have very good AA. Um, and it gets defensive AA. So that's kind of like the main thing going for it. And it also has uh, four heals with Superintendent. So it's got really good survivability. Um, but... You never see it in competitive, in randoms, um, there's better gunboats, there's better torp boats. To me, the only point I see in playing this ship is if you're in a division with a carrier, and you go, like, full AA build, just to troll the other CV, or, you know, give your team a really good chance of winning. Um, I don't really like the ship because a lot of the Potato Shimakaze mains I mentioned before have now graduated to the Halen because the Torps are even easier to hit. So they basically just run around the entire game unspotted, spamming Torps uh, at you that are extremely difficult to dodge. And even though they're not going to one-shot you, they're just frustrating and they have very little game impact. And, as I said, never seen in competitive, a horrible ship for ranked, much better destroyers for randoms. It's just, it's just a C-tier ship. I mean, it's got good AA. Wow. But a, a good, a good CV will just bait out your defensive AA and then come kill you. Because without defensive AA, the AA is not even that special. Now we get to the good stuff. Now we get to the good stuff. Smaland. One of my favorite ships in the game. One of the most overpowered ships in the game. It got removed uh, a while ago. So you can no longer get Smaland, and I don't know if there's any indication that we will ever get Smaland again, other than in Christmas crates this year. Smaland. Uh, why is Smaland good? Well, my be saying it looks like the same as the uh as the Halland. I think they're basically the same hull, maybe some small differences. But the reload, much better. 1.5 seconds. And that's not even taking into account oopsie. That's not even taking into account Fearless Brawler, which gives you an extra 10%. So when you're firing your guns, you get an extra 10% DPM uh off that. So, I think Smaland and Marceau have the best HE DPM. Uh, I'm not sure which one has higher, but, but they're close. Which is pretty crazy, because Smaland only has four guns as opposed to eight on the Marceau. Uh, but that, in of itself, is not what makes the Smaland so good. What makes the Smaland so good? 6.1 detection... And it gets radar. A 7.5 kilometer radar that lasts 20 seconds. So this is like a like a sweaty uh, competitive build that I have. But what you could do, and what I usually do in uh, for randoms, is I drop conceal. I take AFT so you can farm from over 13 kilometers. The detection goes to about 6.7 or 6.8. But it doesn't matter, because if you get spotted, you just pop your radar and dumpster whatever DD is coming at you. Except for, basically, Marceau, Clever, 
uh, and Ragnar. Um, and if they smoke up, it doesn't matter because you radar them. Uh, you also get an insane speed boost plus 30%. Now it only lasts, uh, well, I have the speed boost mod. So with the speed boost mod, it lasts about 80 seconds, almost 80 seconds. Um, but it makes you go very, very fast. It makes you very difficult to hit. Uh, your torpedoes are decent. You get eight of them, and it's kind of weird. One by five, one by three. Uh, they're kind of like Halen torpedoes. Um, I have nothing spec into torpedoes. They only go 76 knots. Still very fast. Um, they don't do much damage. But they're a good way to supplement your damage. Uh, I mean, Smilana's just broken. It's a mainstay in clan battles. Uh, can't use it in King of the Sea because it's banned. Um, mainstay in ranked. Amazing ship for carrying randoms in solo or in division. Just overpowered. Broken. Um, and quite fun. <laughs> Obviously. And now, last but not least, Ragnar. Now you're probably wondering, wait, there you haven't put in any ships in the S plus tier. Well, that's because this tier was saved exclusively for Ragnar. Ragnar was introduced uh, fairly recently, I want to say within the last couple of months, and it is. Uh, to put it lightly, one of, if not the most broken ships in the game. Uh, why, why, why is it broken? Well, it's a destroyer. It's huge, by the way. You can probably tell. It's kind of like the same size as the Elbing. has the same gun layout as Howland and Smaland, uh, with the 2x2. Uh, two two. You get 30,000 HP. Right? That's second only to Elbing. However, unlike Elbing, with Superintendent, you get three heals. And they're, like, decent heals. So, I think you effectively have 45,000 HP on a Destroyer, which is insane. You also get a 7.5 kilometer radar, but unlike Smaland, which is 20 seconds, this is 30 seconds. You could even take the radar mod and make it laster, last longer. I took the engine boost mod to make the engine boost last longer. This is the same engine boost as Smaland, although the cooldown on it is longer uh, than versus Smaland. Um, you get improved dispersion on your guns, which, and this is extremely important for why Ragnar is OP, so OP rather. They're 152s. They're not destroyer caliber guns. They're light cruiser caliber guns. Now, what does that mean? That means you pen 30 millimeters of armor. Why is that important? Well, let's look at the Des Moines, for example. Des Moines, 27 millimeter bow, 30 millimeter deck and armor belt, and then 27 in the stern. So it gets a Des Moines, if you're fighting a Des Moines and a Ragnar, your HE pens him everywhere. His entire ship. And this is the build. This is like basically the standard build for Ragnar in either in competitive and in randoms. You can go like turbo farming build and drop concealment for Fearless Brawler for extra DPM. But you really want AFT because you're kind of big and slow and you have good arcs and you can farm from range. Uh, you have fifteen six range, which is just like basically the same as DM, uh, and you pen him everywhere. Cru you're a destroyer, but you eat cruisers for lunch. Basically, the only cruisers that you don't eat for lunch are like a, a smoked up Smolensk or a Venezia. Every other cruiser you can essentially bully, and you're a destroyer. So let's talk about fighting destroyers. As I mentioned, you get a radar, 
Your concealment is equal to your radar if you take concealment expert. So if you get spotted, boom. Hit the radar button, DD is, DD is lit. For 30 seconds, as long as he's within your radar range. Uh, your DPM, 2.8 seconds is not very good, but the alpha, since you have 150s, is pretty good. 12% fire chance uh, with the flags. Uh, again, as I mentioned, insane dispersion. Um, and, much like the Elbing, 25 millimeter plating. So you basically just go broadside to a destroyer, get spotted, radar him. If he shoots you with HE, he shatters on your side while you're just dumpstering him. And if he starts to shoot AP at you, well, you just angle. And then he stops doing damage to you, but you're still doing damage to him. Again, not particularly fast, but with the speed boost, you go very fast. It has, even though it doesn't have defensive AA, it, I believe, has the best destroyer AA in the game. Uh, it has better AA than Haaland, even with Haaland ha uh, DFAA up, although Haaland gets better f flak when its DFAA is up. But the continuous damage from the Ragnar is better. So you actually have really, really good AA. Uh, the only thing you don't have is torpedoes. And you're kind of big and fat. But that's basically the only downsides to the ship. Literally. You don't have torpedoes, which who cares? You're an insane gunboat. The best. Uh, and you're big and not super maneuverable, so you can kind of eat torps. But you do have the the insane 30% speed boost. So even ships like, even the, you know, the, the powerful gunboats we were talking about before, like a, like a Marceau, like you run up on a Marceau, right? Uh, he doesn't do anything to you. If he shoots you with HE, he shatters on your side. Whereas you're just pumping him full of damage. Um, he tries to use AP. You angle. He does no damage to you. Um, Smolan, same difference. Smolan might have better HE DPM than you. But you have way more HP than him. You pen him everywhere. He does not pen you. Uh, there's really... There's no destroyer in the game that really does well against... Ragnar. The only destroyer that can do okay against Ragnar is probably Druid. Or, well, okay. I take that back. Druid is, can be okay. Haragumo is actually pretty good because of the 30mm pen. Uh, you do pen Ragnar. But the Ragnar has more HP than you base, and also has heals. So, you can trade pretty favorably with a Ragnar, but he has heals and you don't. So you're just you're just the big kid on the block. Nobody can really do anything against you. Um, it's insane in randoms. It's insane in competitive. It's insane in ranked. The ship is broken, beyond broken. I don't know why Smelon was uh, removed from being OP, and then Ragnar was introduced right after. Because the ship is more OP than Smolin. Straight up. I mean, it's it's the only ship that's in the S plus tier. It has its own tier because it is that good. If you don't have one and you like gunboat DDs or you just like abusing overpowered ships, get it. It's amazing. And it really should be nerfed. I don't know what they should do to nerf it. Probably the concealment, because uh, I really dislike stealth radar as a mechanic. It's not healthy for the game, especially on a ship like this. Um, I don't know. I think they need to do something. They definitely need to do something to nerf Ragnar, because it's extremely oppressive to play against. Um, 
But uh, currently, I haven't heard anything about Ragnar being nerfed. So, like I said, if you got some steel to burn, go out and get it. Because it's insane. So, I believe that is all the destroyers uh, ranked according to their tiers uh, at tier 10. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologize for the hiatus between my cruiser video and this video. Um, I will be doing a battleship tier 10 tier ranking video. Hopefully I can put that out uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on my Discord, which I will also put in the link below. And I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts. Uh, if you would move some ships up or down or if you think I got some stuff wrong, or just comments in general. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks again, and have a good one. Cheers.